Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a ROG Strix G531 GT series computer. The exact model is on your screen, but this should apply to any of those series computers. It should help you out with all of those because they're very, very similar. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour so you can see all the major components that you can access when opening up the computer. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. 2.5 inch drive there. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure that it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip the computer over to access your bottom case screws. Now this computer has quite a lot of screws on the bottom. You'll see these four on the top edge of your screen, these four on the bottom edge, and these three in the middle. Once you get those screws out, guys, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool because plastic tends to scratch your cases less than metal does, but some sort of plastic pry tool like a guitar pick. And you're going to go around the entire edge of your computer and gently, slowly, but firmly pry off the bottom case from the computer. Now, be careful not to put your pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components, but just keep it on the edge. Even if you have to take a couple passes around, and even if one side gets stuck, leave it, go on the other side, keep going around until you get that bottom case off. Now, once your bottom case comes loose, guys, don't just rip it off. If you notice here, I have my bottom case just set up a little bit and set down. The reason for that are these two ribbon cables right here. They're attached from your bottom case to your motherboard. And if you rip off your bottom case, you'll damage those ribbon connector ports. So we want to take these off and then we can remove our bottom case entirely. Now these type of ribbon cable connectors, there's a high potential for breaking them and then no longer being able to use them. So I'm gonna play a clip right now showing you how you can maneuver these type of ribbon cable clips. Okay, so to take a ribbon cable out of this kind of connector, first you have your ribbon cable here, you have the port on the motherboard, and then you have this retainer clip over here, this clip opens and shuts like a book cover. It opens from this side and the hinges are on this side. So in order to get that up, be very careful, take a small flat pry tool, slide it underneath and pop it up like that. And then the ribbon cable can come out. After taking the ribbon cable out, I like to put it back down for safekeeping so it doesn't get caught on anything and rip. These are very, very breakable, these retainer clips. And if you break it, you're most likely not gonna be able to find a replacement, um, in which case your ribbon cable won't be able to uh, secure down anymore, so be very careful. To get the retainer clip back in, you would pop it up again very carefully. You would slide the ribbon cable in, nice and flush. It may take a few times if you're not used to it getting it flush, and then just snap the retainer clip down and that's how you would operate that kind of clip. So once those are unplugged and your bottom case has been removed, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now before touching anything in a computer, guys, my goal is to make the computer as safe to work on as possible, which means the first thing I always do is remove or at least unplug the battery. Also, I tend to have my computer sitting on an anti-static pad in my shop. Either that or an anti-static bracelet go a long way to making the computer safe to work on. So if you guys need any help with tools or supplies like that, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll show you some tools and supplies that I use for my projects. But now I'll show you how to get that battery out or again, at least unplug it. You have these four screws here that you remove to actually remove the battery from the computer. And the battery port is here to unplug it. So this type of battery port, check yours out guys. You'll notice it's a two part clip. You're gonna push that top part up, slide it up toward your fan, get it away from the rest of the clip and that will release this clip. And then you can just pop it off straight up and out of your computer. That's how you would remove that battery. That's how you would unplug it from the motherboard. Okay, so now that the battery has been removed or unplugged, we're safer to proceed deeper into the computer. Uh, the first thing I'll shout out here, guys, this is your RAM right here. You have two RAM ports right there. The way that RAM is held in is with two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. The way to get the RAM stick out is to gently pry those arms apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. 
the RAM stick will then release. It will very often pop up a little bit, and then you can uh, grab it, slide it out of that port, and take your RAM stick out. You can put it back in the same way. There's a long end and a short end, so you can only plug it in one way. After plugging it in, making sure that it's flush, you just press right here in the middle, press it down, and those two metal arms will snap onto it and secure your RAM stick. So that's how you operate your RAM. Uh, I'll have the information below in the description, the specs for the RAM, what kind of RAM it takes, um, the maximum RAM that this computer allows. And I'll also have a link below in the description. I'll try to put it up top as well. It'll give you a list of all the replacement parts, all the upgradable parts for this model computer, as well as any of the tools or, or supplies uh, that I use. It'll be all in the same list. The next thing, guys, your solid state drive is right over here. It's just a black guard that goes over it. You can undo this screw right here and then just peel back this black guard. The solid state drive is right there. It'll then unplug from this port. And again, I'll have some upgrade and replacement parts in that link uh, down below. This is your keyboard ribbon cable right here. This is your touchpad ribbon cable right here. Uh, these are your speakers over here, this one here, and then the wires go all the way across, connect it to this speaker here, and then the speakers plug into the motherboard right here if you're looking to get at your speakers. Um, don't pull the wires. That applies to any of these connections in the computer. Don't pull on the wires. Put your fingernails on either grip or a pry tool or a pair of pliers or whatever you can get, but don't pull on those wires. Uh, jimmy that out of the plug. That's how you get at your speaker wires. Uh, this is your LCD cable coming in from the hinge assembly and your LCD. It cradles itself underneath the fan, comes all the way around, plugs in there. To get at that, you would just grab this black pull tab, pull straight up and out of the computer to get that out. Your fan and your heatsink assembly is up here. You have two fans, one here on this side, one on this side. The heatsink assembly goes in from this vent to this vent, and it goes over the GPU, over the CPU here. So to take your fans up, guys, if you're here to try to clean those out or blow those out, maybe you have an overheating issue, make sure to clean out these vents really well. And then to get your fans out, each fan has three screws right here and then right here. These are the three screws on this side. After removing those screws, guys, unplug your fans. This one plugs into the motherboard here, similar to the speakers. And this one plugs into the motherboard here. Again, don't pull on those wires. Um, unplug the actual plug from the motherboard. After getting those up, if you're here to access your CPU, GPU, maybe you want to put some new thermal paste on, you would undo these four screws here, these four screws here. One thing to keep in mind, guys, you'll notice right here on your computer, it's a, a warranty void sticker. You may encounter several of those when you go into um, some gaming computers, some high-end computers. That sticker, if it's been damaged, voids your warranty. So please keep that in mind when doing anything with your computers. After removing those guys, you'll be able to access your GPU, CPU. I'll have a video link above, also below in the description. It'll give you a tutorial on how to apply thermal paste correctly after cleaning off the old stuff. You definitely wanna clean off the old stuff. Don't, don't put new thermal paste down over the, the dry, crusty stuff. You may have the reverse effect. Instead of helping the heat transfer out, you may be locking it in. So there'll be a video link below in the description for that. The last thing I'll shout out, guys, is right here down in this area. It's not really part of a teardown because there's no hard drive here, but this is actually an area for an additional hard drive or solid state drive right down here in the corner. You may have to purchase the equipment. You may have to purchase this hard drive caddy. Um, and then again, you'd have to purchase the hard drive or the solid state drive. You're looking at a SATA connection a 2.5 inch drive, and then you'd have to purchase the hard drive connector and the ribbon cable that plugs right here. See that, that port? It says hard drive. That's where you'd plug that in. So again, in that list of replacement parts down below, I'll have an additional hard drive kit uh, linked in there. So you can buy the caddy right here that screws in with these four screws, um, the hard drive connector, all, all that stuff that plugs in there. But that's kind of a cool feature that this computer has. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it helped you access those main components um, after safely getting inside. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. Um, if you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those several times a day. 
So thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.